Last time we blackboarded Sulphur Springs on an insanely fast time. We were able to get second place overall out of every single map that we've done so far. Now part of me thinks it's because the map's actually relatively easy and because everything circles around the front so much it's easy to go fast. But then I also think it's because of the new and improved apocalypse being 10 times easier and faster and also the new top path boomerang being a lot cheaper making it easier to get it quicker and go faster. So what I want to do today is I want to go through stream bed and I want to see if we can go just as fast. If we start making brand new times that are at the top of the charts every single time we do a map, then it's Apocalypse and the new boomerang monkey to blame. And something I never thought I would say, I'm actually going to be using Striker Jones as well because that pierce on all of the towers that he now has is amazing. I think that's such a cool thing to have. And when is pierce a bad thing? But one thing I forgot is that if we are going to get Striker Jones, I do want to use Octo Jones. I think that is the coolest skin. It reminds me of Pirates of the Caribbean, and I love it. And then I just wanted to show you guys that we're already level 120, and we almost have 40,000 monkey money just from playing the game. We haven't done anything special. We're just going through and blackboarding every single map that we play, and it's just such an awesome feeling to get through so many maps. I think this is our 29th map, but I believe there's, what, like 70 maps or something crazy? But either way, let's get this thing going, hit play, and then we can actually start with striker so let's just do that and then we'll put a dart monkey up here now the reason i went with stream bed is because sulfur springs is a very fast map because if you happen to miss it just circles around in the same spot allowing you to just zip right through this thing like as fast as you possibly can but this is a straight line and if you remember cubism is our top 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 time being at two hours and 16 minutes with sulfur springs being four minutes slower at two hours and 20 minutes so since cubism is a straight line, this is sort of a straight line, shouldn't we be able to go just as fast on this? I don't see why not. So we're gonna go for it. We're gonna try to get not just a second place time, but we're gonna try to get a first place time. And using this new Glive Ricochet, this is what I was talking about, we have a lead popper that can just pop everything that it can right at the beginning of the game. By level seven, we already had a top path Glive Ricochet. So excuse my excitement, but I just feel like we have a brush of fresh air, a brush, of <laughs> a breath of fresh air due to the fact of these new things and Apocalypse being so much easier. So I think we can actually start just getting some really, really good times. But then it kind of bums me out because then does that mean that we have to go back and like redo all of our old times? Because now we're going to have bad times. Like Monkey Meadow could have been like the fastest thing ever, but it wasn't. But if that's the case, then I'd want to actually go through every single 70 something maps once we're done and try to beat them all again to do better times. So that would be like a 10 year process. I'm going to be an old man with a gray beard. My daughter will end up playing the game for me instead because I'll be in a wheelchair by that time because I don't even know how long it's going to take to do this one. If I do two videos a week and let's say there are 70 maps, that's 35 weeks. That's almost... That's nearly a year of balloons, but I don't do two weeks. Sometimes I only do one, sometimes I do zero. So it just, this seems like endless stuff. That's why we've got to keep going through these as fast as we possibly can. Now, Striker, obviously his big old thing is that his bombs are great. So what I'm thinking about doing is going kind of with like a heavy bomb strategy for pretty much all of these game modes. I don't see why not. Cause not only does he have the extra pierce now, which is awesome, but it do don't they also get like crazy stuff? Two layers per shot and Mortar Monkey's blast radius increased by 10%. Oh, that's more for Mortar Monkey. So I think he gets better stuff for the mortars, but at the same time, does it matter? We can still wreck everything. And I believe he makes it allow it so this can actually pop black balloons because I remember this was nerfed a little while ago, making it pretty much useless because like all the black balloons just slip right through, even with the explosions. But with Striker Jones, I make think that that doesn't happen anymore. Like I remember a strategy I did for Dark Castle a long time ago where I used Striker and like 47 Moab Maulers and then some recursive clusters and it destroyed an expert map. So couldn't we technically just throw a bunch of those down, get like an MIB to make sure like everything can get, can't get through and then just destroy even DDTs and the whole nine yards? I feel like we can. But this is what we're rating for right here. Level eight, towers near the hero get 5% range and 25% pierce. Let's see how much that actually is. We're gonna wait for this round to end. And I'm using this as a reference. It's like right there. I mean, 5%, I guess 5% isn't actually anything in the grand scheme of things. <laughs> I was expecting to see an actual like boost. They're like, wow, it's all the way to the rock. But I, it wasn't that much. It really wasn't. But I just can't believe how useful Striker Jones is now. Like, I know that's not the craziest thing. Like 25% pierce is a lot. Like it makes the spike factory so much better just having that extra 25%. But the problem is... 
is that I just never really used him before because he only applied to mortars and bombs. But now that he does that 25% pierce to everybody, why not use him? Like his first ability is actually really good. Like, let's say you just barely pop down the Moab. You can just use that to stall the ceramics underneath while you destroy them. It's a really, really cool thing. Okay, now we got to go double tap. Oh my gosh, that's a lot. Okay, that is a lot, a lot. So I think we should go advance and then click back one. I think that would actually be faster for sure. Okay, so we're going to put you here because that's the best way to do this. And then just do that again. I think that's the best way to do it. We're going to overuse this boomerang, but why not? Don't use what's not broken. Don't use what's broken. Use good stuff. That's the saying that my dad used to tell me, my, my grandpa used to tell me. Along with that, they walked up hill both ways to school in the snow kind of thing. But this boomerang is too good and we got to make sure we use it a lot. You know what I find very fascinating about this whole series is that even though I'm on number 29 and I've done this now 29 times, <laughs> I've played this game mode, right? I always think that I'm going to come into this thing and beat it faster. Like, oh, maybe today it'll only take an hour and 45 minutes because I'll tell my wife, I'm gonna be like, hey, I'm going to go into the room and make a video. And then I'm like, oh, it should be quicker today, you know, but no, it's it's a minimum of two hours and 16 minutes. Cause that's what we did cubism. So unless we can beat that, which is what we're going to try to do today, let's just say generalizing, you're going to be here for at least two hours, and 30 minutes. But every time I think like, oh, today will be the day that I'll hit like an hour and a half. It'll only take an hour and 30 minutes to beat all the game modes, but it's just time consuming. It's just impossible based on how insane this game is. There's so many game modes. But soon, mark my words. Oh my gosh, we're going too far here. We got to get a, a bomb a little quicker. I put him too close to the top, so he's like chasing more than he should. But I think once I get cluster bombs, that'll be completely useless. There we go. I just went with the middle shot dart instead of the bottom, and I don't think I should have done that. I think that was my downfall right there because he's not as good. <laughs> but I just wanted something that'll clean up the like minimal amount of bl camo balloons that we're going to see before 40. This is still only beginner mode. But basically on sulfur springs our downfall was or why we lost it by four minutes was probably a couple things one i changed my hero because i was using benjamin the entire way through which was insanely fast i think he had a lot to do with my speed no joke but then i changed it at the very end on chimps i believe to sada no i changed it to striker jones because i wanted to make sure we had a cleaner strat for chimps because we don't need a benjamin because we can't make money in chimps so that was pretty slow and then a couple of times the balloons did go down the track. And since that map does circle around an infinite amount of times, it sat there and went like this all the way down and it did lose us some time, but four minutes is a lot. So my goal today is to not let even one balloon slip past this right here. Now, I'm not saying that will happen, but if it doesn't, we will be in a really good spot to have the top time because look at this. You just, you can't even see balloons, which I'm going to actually change it up today too. Normally on deflation, we just throw down like the bottom path crossbow master. We're not doing that today. Now, the problem with doing anything but that is that you end up taking longer to set it all up than it would be just to place it down and lose a little bit of time fighting Moabs. But what we're going to do is we're just going to put one bomb down and then try to go ar build around that while it's playing. Because the thing is, when you go with that crossbow master, what I've noticed is that he does chase sometimes. And that little bit of chase could be some extra time. We're getting into the real speed running stuff here where you got to just eke out every nanosecond you can. And I think these are the ways you do it for sure here we go let's try it we're gonna go home we're gonna hit play and then we're gonna hit advance and back and there we go stream but that's way faster and now for deflation what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop a bomb i don't remember the hotkey which is bad it could have been a lot faster we're going all the way here and then hit play oh my gosh the first one's black balloons the first oh geez louise are you kidding me okay <laughs> i take that back that is ridiculous <laughs> that was such a letdown. That's going to help me cry myself to sleep tonight. At least I'll sleep well for <laughs> a good long while. The first thing on round 30 are black balloons after all that sh talking about how they nerfed the bottom path recursive. Well, I probably should have started with the top path boomer and then gotten a bomb and then a village and then striker. And that would have very well carried us all the way to 60. But why not just do this? I'm really curious to see if we are going to chase these Moabs. But I doubt it. I doubt it's going to be enough that it matters. I think that restart in that first 10 seconds is what's going to cause us problems. You do see the tips of these Moabs. I'm not sure like my recursive cluster striker strategy would have been any better, but you do see the tips of them. But not if he crits, it seems. It seems that you can just get lucky. But there you go. You saw a little bit of it there. And then as I'm staring at this map, I notice like I always notice the steam because it's a stream, or stream, is it stream bed or steam bed? Whatever, but there's steam coming out of the little water pit here. And that makes sense. It could be a hot water pit, it could be like a hot spring. But why is the steam coming out of the ground? 
Why are the bones steaming? Is that like a problem? Is it wrong? Or is it something you could click? I've never actually paid attention and wondered why the steam's coming out of the bones. That makes no sense. Unless like the meteor just hit and like everything's kind of like that. But that wouldn't make any sense. Cause I feel like we're archeologists here digging all this up. Random thoughts, this is what's in my head. We're almost done with this. And if you guys are liking this so far, definitely let me know by hitting that like button. Subscribe if you're new to the channel because it helps get this content out to the rest of the Bloons community and use code DeBloon in the Ninja Kiwi store if you plan to buy any monkey money or Insta packs or whatever you may have it. But here we go, that big old BFB and we cleared it out. Good stuff, gone. Now we are on to medium mode, I believe, hopefully. So we go advanced back. I'm gonna have to get used to that. There's the poopy brown border, standard, boom. All right, same thing. We're gonna drop striker. He's not the best tower to start with, so we're gonna do that. Oh my gosh, I gotta start faster here. We're losing time as it is. We gotta go faster, guys. So I think the boomer is the best way, or actually, the boomer is great, but isn't this better? Like, what can actually get passed if you have, like, even attack spare early on, I think it's going to be a boomerang. I mean, you might get caught by some pinks, but I don't think so. Because the boomerang's not good for pinks either. The top pass only good for group balloons, so it can bounce across them. If you just have some crazy fast yellows or pinks coming out, you've probably noticed that it doesn't do that well. It kind of just skips over a few of them, kind of hits them sometimes, just not that good. So I think this is going to be an MVP tower of today as well with Striker Jones because the legendary Supreme Avocado was trying to explain to me the best that he can, but I'm not good with all the technical stuff. Since you're getting 25% pierce increase from using Striker Jones at level 7 or 8, well, that's just directly damage with the Spike Factory because he doesn't have pierce. It is pierce or it's damage, whatever it is. I did the testing in Sandbox after he told me about it, and sure enough, instead of getting 100,000 pops, I got 125,000 pops having Striker Jones next to him. So it is amazing, and if we get something like Spike Balls here, that means each of these spikes are going to do 25% more damage to these things, right? Could be wrong. But I'm not, because it's going to kick some butts and you guys are going to love it. Because I love the Spike Factory. It just usually you have them in the... Oh, you suck, you suck, you suck. No, 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 no. No, no, no. I started too soon. I should not be getting one that soon in the game. What am I thinking? It should be ba farther back. Now we're going to chase things around the map. All right, all right, all right. That was my bad. Oh, dude, what did I just say about this stuff to you? Okay, that... Jeez Louise. Okay, dude. Okay, okay. Get out of here. That was a really bad idea. Experimental things should be done in my off time. I keep making these mistakes. I don't know what I'm doing. I think it's a good idea, but I probably shouldn't have got it so early just because each upgrade's like 600 to a thousand dollars. You can't do that early on. Like that's just silly goose stuff right there. So I think what we're gonna do for camo would be the best way would just, just be a ninja because I don't want to make any more mistakes right now. So this will be the cleanest way to take down any camo early on. And then since the camo rounds are always slow, we might as well add this guy too. So now with both of them, it is the, I know they come out slower, but doesn't it just seem like it's slower too? Because with all the explosions and stuff going on from all the other towers, it just feels like the camos just come out slower and you have to wait longer. It's such a weird feeling, but it just feels like we go faster when it's not camo. But I don't think we've done a strategy like this in a while where we just throw random stuff at the front. Now it's random, but it's not. Like we got our camos over here. We got this guy for the early pops and this guy cleans up everything in this perfect little bend here. But it's a random as far as the fact that like normally we just like kind of go for towers and make sure they go strong and whatnot. But this is a clean way of just making sure that nothing gets by. I really like this. And then as far as the Moab goes, I think I should just be able to strike her, jones it. I mean, the recursive cluster will take it all out regardless. And then maybe we can get, oh my gosh, we can get that too. That's so goofy. And then just go like, oh, we don't even need his ability. Didn't even use it. I've got another question that I've been pondering for you guys. I like to think of myself as like a low budget philosopher. I don't think or ponder about anything probably useful. I just think of dumb stuff. Like last time I asked you guys about what your favorite or first, first TV show you guys remember as a kid. Meh, not that important but it's fun to think about. And same with what I'm about to ask you too. What is your go-to drink? Like if you ask anyone that knew me, I drink coffee. I drink a lot of coffee. I probably shouldn't drink as much coffee. Sometimes I'll have at least like six, seven cups a day. And the reason I'll say six or seven is because like, I think a cup's like eight ounces, but I'll get the 12 ounce. So that's already like a cup and a half and I'll have like four of those or more, but I drink it black. So I don't think it's as bad as like shoving it full of creamer, but don't let me fool you. I still go to Starbucks and get like a grande mocha or something, which has all that cream and sugar regardless. But that's my go-to drink. I drink coffee more than I drink water for sure. And then if I had to choose a second, it'd probably be Dr. Pepper. So what is your guys' like go-to drink? What do you drink most of? Is it coffee? Is it tea? Is it water? Is it like something crazy like Evian or Gatorade? 
but I just need to know what is like the cool stuff out there, what you guys drink on a daily. But I do need something to pop these camo leads though, because you know, this guy can't do it. Oh no, no, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna forget. I'm gonna like do it last second and be dumb about it. Just, okay, whatever, we'll just do it like this then. Like this, okay, just do that. Okay, now we got these. There's nothing that can get past it now. I, just, I lost my train of thought there for a second. I was like, what do I do? No, 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 I have this guy. That's why I bought him. See, I do know what I'm doing. It's like that movie Soul from Disney. As long as you don't think about it, you can get in the zone and you can play the piano really well. You can do whatever you do really well. But as soon as you start putting your mind to it, that's when you make the mistakes. You just got to let it go. Don't think about it and you'll get everything that you need to get done. And we're going to go advanced. Oh, it's going to take so much getting used to. I don't know why. Military only with a striker. That's going to be actually perfect. But we don't have bombs. So that's not, not perfect, I guess. Dude, what are we going to do here? Just wait for the sub or just put a sniper down? I'd like to just get the mortar and call it a day, right? I think that will be the best way to do this early on. There we go. But now he's not in range, huh? What a what an idiot. Like, is that gonna be okay? He is. Good. Thank you. Well, sometimes that's not enough range because on the you guys know on the down, like if you put a tower here, it's less in range than one that's up here because of the way the down works with the up works. It makes no sense. That is helpful though. He already gets a 10% speed increase to all of his attacks, which is nice because that's our main problem with the mortar this early on, is that he's just slow, but he's tearing it up. Now I think like a yellow is gonna get through us, so maybe I should just put this back there and let it slide into the screen a little bit. But I mean I could always just chase it too, so maybe it is better to have now see that's exactly what I'm talking about. Oh my gosh. And then I, I panicked, not panicked, but I tried to move it, which I shouldn't have, because then it just took longer. So maybe we should have a sniper here to take down like the yellows, like that. There we go. I hate how much the helicopter costs. I should have bought it first, but if I would have bought it first, then I for sure would have traced balloons around to the end of the track, which wouldn't have been good because this guy is where it's at early on. Like he's so good. You get that quad darts. He'll chase everything around for you with pursuit and he'll be the reason why we keep everything above the map just because the mortar upgrades cost too much this early on. And it's just not, I just don't like the mortar guys. Like every once in a while I'll play with it and then I'll be like, oh yeah, guys, I like the mortar today, but 99% of the time, like it's not a good tower. He's just goofy. Like it can be good. I'm not saying like that. Like obviously it's a skill issue thing, but I just, he lets me down. He's bums me out. Okay. Let's just do this then. Okay. That was bad. I just realized I still don't have like a solid camo. This have to be in range for this to work. That pierce thing towers near the hero. So it does have to be in range. So I might as well just get this one so I can get more pierce on this guy, but he's going to be our main camo popper. I'm going to get him up to like semi-automatic and maybe even elite defender by 60, but we do need camo lead eventually. So I think I'll have to use a mortar for that because I went with this path for the helicopter just because it's not worth it to me to go for the middle path camo if you're going for top path, just because it's, it's kind of goofy, right? But now this guy's super strong. We're not going to get to Apache Dartship, I don't think. Just no point. I was on my way to save up for the Elite Defender, and then I realized one of the best towers in this game, like early on when you're limited on your towers and your selections, is the Plasma Accelerator. It can take down everything but I think Purple Balloons and it can shred through Moab class. So I think it'd be even better than the Elite Defender. But just in case, I did get this to take care of the camo leads on 59. I upgraded this guy to heavy shells because that thing's just a nice little cleanup. Like if something does happen to get by, he'll help clean up a lot faster. But 11,000 is gonna like just make this super broken, I believe. Like for instance, we are getting to around here with these Moabs currently. And now with this guy, almost there, almost there. Here we go. Now I don't think we'll, Okay, so now it will move from here up to there. That's really, really good. So I'm gonna move this one a little closer as well, trying to just get as much as we can up the front. I do think it's odd though that you don't get the striker face like the mortar has with the towers that have that 25% extra pierce. Because there's really no way to tell if it's actually working. It's kind of deceiving in a way. But here we are on 59 and we're doing really good. I really like the plasma accelerator. I added another dartling here as well. And I should be able to just like stall that up with Striker's ability and I did. That was super easy. Are we on Apocalypse now? Hopefully not, right? Back that one. Oh my God, that is that is taking up most of the time. We are on Apocalypse, that's not good. Okay, so we're, I don't wanna start with Striker. I just don't think that's a good idea. So I'm gonna start with this guy right here and we're gonna put this one right there. And I think, why didn't I go faster? What am I doing? So since you now get into round money, this is the round that's gonna change everything. And this is why I went with stream bed with the straight map, seeing if we could make up just as much time. And if we could get second place in front of Sulphur Springs are actually just like right on that same time frame. Cause if we do, then it is Apocalypse. That's the game changer because this is just ridiculous that we get so much money this early on. It's kind of crazy. Cause usually by now in Apocalypse, we'd have a few getting to the end of the track. That's just how it works in Apocalypse. You don't have enough money. So you end up with really bad towers. 
and we're not doing the best like i'm not gonna brag and say we're just killing it but this guy is keeping it at bay like i said before he just can't handle like spaced yellows and pinks but like these ones look at he's tearing them up no big deal now if i didn't have to get striker i would just get a sniper and that would solve all those problems but we're still going really 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 fast so we have not lost a balloon or even a spike yet we've kept it going this whole time but as you can see like they are getting pretty far and then we had a couple re regrows get to this point even so it's not as fast as i'd like and i think that's 100 percent because of striker benjamin gave us so much money early on so we were able to already have better towers by now including the end of the round cash so we're just not doing as good as i'd like to now striker i didn't just use him just to throw in a hero here to try to be different or anything i really thought he was going to help us a lot and he's not harming us yet it just oh man i just wish he had a little bit more power early on I think the best way might be a sniper right now, but again, there's just no money. We're so broke. We're And just think about it, how Apocalypse used to be. We'd even be more broke. We would just have this tower and we'd be losing so many lives and I'd be kicking myself in the head for not putting this one a little bit more farther down because we're losing so many lives. So it's just kind of crazy. So first farm before 28, I don't think that's bad, but then you guys know how the drill works. As soon as you get the farm, that's when things start getting out of hand like they are right here. And I think the next best thing is 100% a bomb, duh. We have Striker Jones, like we have to get a bomb. I seem to worry about more about camo, so I do need to get a village eventually, but I think Recursive Cluster, why did I forget about Recursive Cluster? Like it's so good. And then once Striker Jones ramps up a little bit and gets that thing to where the black balloons are actually vulnerable to bombs, then it's unstoppable. Recursive is the way to go. It is the way. Honestly, I think with just a village play strategically, giving it camo, we could just put like three more recursives and I don't see even Moabs or anything getting past us. Let's see here, let's put this one, I guess like right there, that puts him in range already off the go. But you know what I've been doing a lot lately, like in every game mode I play, especially when I was doing like the collection event, I get double discounts. Double, I get a discount village and then buy another discount village and then I buy camo because it's cheaper. And then I get the bottom path monkey town and then monkey city because then i get even more money and it's just one it's just a really oops it's just a really good way to farm and you just start making like oodles and oodles of cash and it's just so good it's so slept on i don't know why people don't do it they probably do i just am like late to the party i'm like seven years five years into this game and i never use the discount villages i did use them a lot in bloons monkey city though because the farming wasn't the best because sometimes they'll just throw you into like the craziest rounds. If you've never played Bloons Monkey City, you're missing out. That game is iconic. And I hope they bring it back like without ads. Like I hope it's like this where you pay for it because I did not like the whole having to buy stuff all the time. I didn't, so I didn't, I wasn't able to progress that much, but that's besides the point. Point being is that they'll just throw you into an intense, crazy round. It just ramps up out of nowhere. And so I would use the village because back in that game, you'd literally just place the village down and all your towers would be discounted. You wouldn't have to go with like a discount, but then you can get like the monkey town equivalent and it would make everything like give you more money. So it was a great way to farm. It was awesome. You know, this might be perfect for double HP Moabs, wouldn't it? Because if we have a striker Jones and then a good village like this with P the Pierce and the primary training, all that good stuff, we might be able just to go crazy with this. As you can see, we're destroying the Pablos. I don't even see anything. I mean, my eyes are getting kind of wild, like looking at all this stuff, but we can just do these for these little simple upgrades. And that's how you do it. At least I think, yeah, that's it. Good, that was easy. Oh my gosh, but oh, for, we have re reverse. I hate reverse so bad. <laughs> I'm gonna complain about it every time. I just don't like, I think it's such a waste of my time. But we're gonna put this one here and then put the dart and then hit play. I'm trying to turn over a new leaf and be more positive. So I'm gonna say two positive things about reverse. It allowed me to use the sub, which I didn't wanna use it before over here because it kind of gets blocked in this angle. So it's only good for like this straight path. So now I can use it in this whole area, which is kind of nice. And then it gives my sniper a little bit of a straighter shot. I mean, it's out of striker's range now, so that's kind of a bummer, but like this is a little bit longer than here, I think, or is it just in my head? Not sure, but it's getting the job done. And I haven't farmed yet. Normally I'd farm on medium just to make it go a little bit quicker, but with the strikers and the bombs, with his little boost of the bombs, I don't think we need it. Like he has extra pierce, he has extra bomb stuff. I think he shoots faster with striker, like we're, we're kicking some butts with it. So then I'm thinking it's probably honestly better now that I have camo just to get rid of this stuff and just to buy a couple more bombs since we're not hurt by black balloons, we're not hurt by anything really. Just having a few of these, like we won't see any balloons ever. And it might just be because of the bright flashes across the screen that don't allow you to see anything else in that area. But it looks like nothing's actually getting past our bow and it's just getting destroyed, especially with this guy here too. I'm not gonna lie though, not farming is kind 
kind of a drag. You just don't really have enough money to do anything. And so you're just slowly clicking through upgrades. You don't really have much to think about. You're just kind of waiting, which is nice. It's a nice change of pace. Usually we're going through just trying to farm as crazy as we can, but you end up placing more things and clicking more things just because like you just want to get that quick fix of upgrading something or placing something when if we had farms, we'd be worrying about like trying to build up those farms, which costs a lot. And then we just focus on like one tower going big. But I mean, this is really good. I haven't seen balloons in a while. We might be on track for like a super fast time. I think we're like a minute or two behind, like ahead of what we normally get into hard mode if we were to end right now. I believe it's around like 48 minutes or so and we're at 46, 57. I don't know, this should be pretty fast time but it just seems like it's going slower for some reason. Maybe it's because of this right here, having to go through this, this menuing like this is like the slowest I've ever had to do in my life, honestly, having to go backwards. But we can put this here and then put this here like we always do. I don't know if that's the best spot for striker. I just like him up at the front like that. And honestly, I think this is still the best route to do. Just go with the boomer, but maybe put him here instead because then when I long range him, he'll be able to go to the second track in case I miss something like preferably I'd rather hit everything ahead of the screen. But if I have to, this long range can reach here and do a last second cleanup. So the only thing I don't like about using striker right now is that the setup is taking way too long. No balloons are getting past us and we're keeping them all at the front of the screen, which is nice, but we're on round 28 almost and I don't have a sufficient like grasp on what we're doing in, in order to farm. Normally by now you'd have Benjamin and he'd already have bought you a farm. You'd have Sada and you could have just soloed to a farm. So I'm kind of need to like get my reins on what we're doing here. Otherwise impoppable is going to be really slow. I think it's my fault for maybe I shouldn't have started with the boomer on this or maybe I should have placed them like here so it could have traveled up the track. But I think we're in a good spot now with having this cross, but we can handle 33 and whatnot. So we can farm a little bit. Like you don't need to farm on regular hard mode, but it is gonna help speed it up for sure. Because once you're in those like 70s rounds, you're gonna be waiting for like a tack zone when you could have had it on round 60. So I don't know what to do with camo. I don't wanna get a village this early on. So I guess I should just get a sharpshooter cause it'll help pop all the camo and then get a recursive and then get a village and then upgrade to marketplaces. That just seems so slow. I shouldn't be like re relying on the recursive cluster this early. I feel like I should just wait, but it will help me pop down the Moab for sure. Like even though it's not a strong Moab popper, it, like it is, it's like it is, but it isn't, but it is, you know what I mean? All you have to do is a little bit of damage to it and he'll do the rest. It's like, I got this guys, hold my Dr. Pepper. You know what I mean? And there it is, he'll clean it up. Oh, yeah, so it takes a little second to pop it open, but once you do, it's like a one shot to it. Everything inside. All right, so I'm just gonna greed with one more farm. Three is a good number, and I'm gonna go with like the middle path one so you get that extra $16 per round. Actually, I don't know if I have that monkey knowledge. If it is a monkey knowledge, I'm not sure I have it, and so then I'm not gonna be getting it. No, it looks like I am. I'm getting that $26, so I should be getting like 416 rather than 400 per round if I'm right. But now we can kind of like carry with what we have here. The recursive's strong enough, we could just make it go a little bit faster. So what towers do we want to rely on for this? And if you've noticed, I have not used a druid yet, which I think is awesome. I don't think we're gonna even need a druid. Let's just see if this is fast enough. I think it will be. Just going with this bottom path one and then getting an elite defender. It should keep everything in front of the screen to where we don't even see it, hopefully. All right, that's the speed I like to see. I like to see those Moabs just completely get decimated before they even get off the screen. That's awesome. And then a lot of people have been saying this guy's been buffed up a lot. Like the Spectre's really good. Like it's always been pretty good, like pretty decent, but now it's supposed to be like really good. So I'll give it a shot here and test it out and see how good it is. But honestly, I feel like I'm sleeping on the mortar and the bomb since we are using Striker Jones. You might as well use the best that you can get. I don't like, I just don't know what this ability does. And I know this one regenerates abilities, but I just don't like using abilities. So then I'm like, ah, oh, maybe I'm not using it to the best of my ability. But here's our first round 63. And as I expected, like between this one and then this guy buffed up with the village and striker, it's barely getting to right here. Cause I was gonna buy something else, but you don't need to. Like we're not wasting that much time by letting it go to the very corner here. And once we get the specter, everything I think is gonna stay behind the screen between these two. And if you haven't figured it out yet, I'm not only trying to get just as fast as Sulphur Springs, trying to prove my point that Apocalypse made it so much easier to get faster times, but I'm also trying not to use the towers that I always use. Like I always use a Druid, I always use the like subs a lot. Like I would have already sold this and started using the sub. And what's that other one that I always use? Like Sada and Benjamin. I'm trying to change it up and also prove that I can get an amazing time 
based on the fact that Apocalypse is like super easy now, but this is pretty good. Like we're shredding through this stuff. These sell for five grand, so we're gonna have 15,000 there. So I don't see us getting the Flying Fortress in this game, <laughs> but I really don't think we need it. I'm just kind of like, on Sulphur Springs, if you haven't seen that one yet, I farmed way too crazy. I had a Monkeyopolis and some Top Path Banana Centrals, and I don't know why, or Banana Research Facility, sorry, the fourth tier one. And all of a sudden I had a Apex Plasma Master by 80, and then I also had the Flying Fortress on another round, but I don't, I don't think that's necessary for this. I think we could go just as fast without an Apex. But why have this money if I'm not gonna use it, you know? Like, just go crazy with it. And I'm like just shy of having this village hit this dart monkey, unfortunately. So maybe if I could just put this one here, should it hit it? Yes, okay, there we go. Now we got the primary training on that guy. We got all this money here. Let's just buy something else, why not? How about a tack zone, but we'll go with the middle path so it can actually hit the front of the track. That's pretty good. Dude, that range is insane. That is crazy. I think a regular tack zone is not much bigger than this circle here. That covers this entire bend. If you put it right here in this little bend here, it would cover all of this. This could probably solo most of like chimps mode. That might actually be our strategy. That would, that's such a huge distance. Like if you put that here and then got an ice monkey, like, oh my God, that's actually really good. And then put the ice monkey there to do the embrittlement. Oh my goodness. Let's actually test it. Cause we don't need that tower. I'm just having it there for fun. So that's really good. And then we just put the ice monkey there and then you can alk buff it. So put that right. Th oh my goodness. That might be our chimp strategy. That's so cool. But there's 440 bucks. That's actually really good too. Let's go backwards, forwards, backwards, hard mode. Magic monkeys only with a striker. Jones sounds like the goofiest thing I've ever done in my life, but we'll make it work. We're going to put him here and then hit play. So this is the kind of stuff I don't like is starting this far back because now we are going to be chasing like that, that's gonna take way too long and it's gonna hold up this round for sure. Oh, no, 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 that's, what is that? Like a whole three seconds we just wasted. I can't believe that. I know I sound over dramatic, but like I said, I'm trying to get some top tier times here. I gotta prove a point. I gotta prove that Apocalypse is broken. For this one, I am gonna use and abuse the Druid just because you got to. You don't really have much options here as far as money goes besides going with like a bottom path alchemist rubber to gold. So I do want to get extra money and I think spirit and or bottom path wizard is always the way to go. Unless we do have good money, then we can go with the sun avatar would be a solid path too. Because if I think if you put him here and then give him his middle path upgrade, his range will hit everything, which will just be a great safety net plus just destroyer of worlds. But I am waiting to get striker until after I get the druid of the jungle just because I think it's a way better play. It'll just keep us going a lot faster. And I didn't know that, but the hard thorns is actually a lot better than just going with the middle path. I thought it was just for the leads, but I was messing around and trying to beat Sanctuary on Impoppable, and I wasn't getting the top path because I'm like, oh, I just I want to try to get two druids before I buy the top path and waste that extra money. And sure enough, I was getting dunked on because the top path actually does like do a lot more stuff. It says hard thorns can pop two bloons each and pop any bloon type. So I guess each of these count as an extra two damage as well. It just doesn't make any sense. But now that we got this guy, I don't want him anymore. So I think what I'll do is we'll shimmer this one. Yeah, so we'll shimmer and that'll cover all that problem. So now we can pop camo with him. So we have camo lead. We have literally everything that we're gonna need. But, oh, and then sure enough, oh my goodness. It's making it way too far back because this striker's just not good enough. So I think we do need to get Necromancy Unpopped Army and then we can use Striker Stall and the Moab shouldn't get past us at all. Come on, what are you doing? Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. All right, now the most busted upgrade early on is this guy right here. This is such a busted upgrade because all you have to do is pop things within his range, which is everywhere. The range is huge because you went with the bottom path and like the camo upgrade gives you even more range now. And then these literally go into the screen and destroy everything in its path paired with this guy. I never get Heart of Thunder, but I might as well try it. See if it just adds more pizzazz to this. But we should be able to carry this all the way to Spirit of the Forest without any problems. But here's what we're gonna do. We have that Moab coming up. So I am gonna do this, stall it out. Oh my gosh, okay. It wasn't as good as I thought, but I mean, it worked. But that proves my point. We are not going to be able to take down 50s with what we have here. It's kind of ugly. So I think the most efficient way to take down the Moabs would be to get this one here all the way to Bloom Jitsu and then Alk buff him and only him. Yeah, I think that's the best way. And then what we'll do is we'll sell it when we have enough to get this one. So that's 4,000 and 5,000, so 9,000 dollars. 
meaning that we need 28,800 bucks. That's a lot of money, but we can get there. So I don't actually, I'm not actually gonna be able to do it. That's such a bummer. Like we took it out, no problem, but I thought I'd be able to have it before 60. It's just not the case, but I think I can now. Yeah, okay, we're good now. That's a bummer. It didn't make it that far, but because I was stalling, I should have just sold those at 19,000 and bought in the Prince of Darkness. I honestly should have, it would have been faster because all the Moabs were getting down to this area here and I think they still are. That's what's kind of a bummer, but this guy's gonna start making a lot of money. And so with that, I think I should buy my first super and I kind of want him in range of striker so we can get that extra 25% pierce. And I think if I add this range to it, yeah, it's still really good. There's just no debate. This is the best early tower from Magic Monkey, and this is the best tower from Magic Monkey. He's made us $22,000, which allowed us to buy the Sun Avatar, and then on top of that, get a Dark Knight. So now nothing can get past us. And yeah, I could buy more stuff. I guess I could buy a you know a big old guy for this one, take down that ZMG really quickly, use my abilities there, stall him out instant stuff we have 292 lives on top of it because everything's just giving us lives it's insane now we're on this one advance backwards i uh, almost clicked shoots and now we're on double hp mobs what are we gonna do for half cash i just realized like that map sucks <laughs> half cash is so bad we'll be able to do it all right so double hp mobs is gonna be a little bit tough but because we have striker stall ability or no we'll just do i think the best way the most effective way of this is always going to be the bomb tower. That's just the way to go about it. Going with that Moab assassin just ends it so quickly. So I'm going to try a little something different and see if this is faster. We're going to go with a 022 sniper before we go with a bomb or anything, because I think it'll keep most of the stuff behind the track to where we can't even see it, which will make up for losing a little bit here and there. Now, the problem with this is it takes a while to get there. It ain't cheap to buy all these sniper upgrades early on. It's honestly just a night and day difference from how much money Ben gives you. Like, I'm just so used to that. That extra, what is like 150 and then 250. It's just a lot of money. And in the early game, it means a lot because you have a couple grand by the first 20 rounds or so, I believe. And you're able to buy this tower with it for pretty much being free. Now you got to save up. And on top of saving up, you're being kind of like cut at the ankles because you have a tower that doesn't do that much damage. So it's just kind of goofy. But this is what I wanted him to keep it up there. But this is why I always just use the Druid. Why would I use this tower? Like it costs more and it's not as good. Like it's doing okay, but the Druid is the best. See right here, this would not happen with the Druid. That was ugly. That was only round 19. And it's because I went for the farm. It's like the game knows. Every time you go for a farm, it's like, don't do it. You're not allowed to do it. So I think the best route here would be the, the this guy at this time, just to have it. Oh, I can't believe this. We're not going to lose, obviously, but the fact that this is even happening is so embarrassing. We're losing so much time. All right, so I got my groove back. It's mainly because the cluster bomb's just a good tower, and then these two together are just great. And I think I'm safe to farm one more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're keeping everything above the track now with the sniper and the bomb and everything. So I just need one more, and then we'll prep for... Oh, it's a double HP, though. Okay, so I do need to buy a middle path Moab Mauler, but then this time we might actually keep it. No, I need it for the farm, huh? I was gonna say we should just keep it and use it, but... And I was gonna say we just don't even need it. We'll just get a regular Moab Mauler and call it a day, but I don't wanna do that because I don't want to waste extra time. We've been wasting a lot of time as it is. So I think it'd be best just to eat it up, call it a day. Probably should have put it at the front to help pop stuff too. I just don't think everything through. My mind is just kind of dumb sometimes. But there's our Moab Assassin already. That's not bad. And then what I think I'll do is I'll upgrade a semi-automatic too. Because I think I should be able to get it before 40. Not that it'll matter. I just want it. And then I'll do that one. There we go. Get semi-automatic. Sell this one. Buy these two. And the reason I got semi-automatic is for 42. So I don't have to like think about it last second and then lose. But he's going to tear it up making sure that we don't lose any to those camos. So here's my plan for this, and it should be pretty good. I'm going to put this one here, and we're going to do what we already did. We're going to get some, uh, I was going to say camo, but I think I should just get, no, no, no. Here's what we're going to do first, actually. I don't care about camo. We're not going to have enough to hurt us anytime soon, so I am going to get jungle drums and then primary training, and then we're going to grab a couple of these ones up here in range of everybody. There we go, and then we're going to grab another one. And the reason why is because we should be able to take out Moabs with this team, no problem, like legit. And then we did, but just so slow. So I'm gonna get rid of you and then put another one here. That could be better, let's be real here. Dude, it's taking way too long to take these guys out. We need more. So I'm gonna see if I can put another one there now. I think I can with that little upgrade. There we go, there we go, there we go. Just get it in there. Okay, there we go. And then I guess I don't need the village in their range just to have enough in there and then just put them all right there and they're like a little death trap that when you literally come out of the thing, you just get blown up. That's pretty good. 
And then to make it worse for these guys, couldn't we just put like attack right here? Yeah, we can. Yeah, duh. Because now that thing will just shred everything. So far, this team is doing really well and I'm proud of them. And I think adding a $21,000 tax zone is going to make it all the even better because even fortified mobs are only making it to here. And have I even seen a BFB yet? I don't even know. I think we're just kicking some butts over here. I wish I could get a village to that guy though. Maybe I can because I'm going to need it for like 78. So I'll just do this and then get that. Is that on there? Woohoo! It worked. And we'll get this one. So then I could probably just get rid of this one, right? Because that didn't need all that. Yeah, because then these are still covered. I found a little spot up here and that's going to break the game. If I can get it. If I can find it, we're good. Literally can't. I'm not doing it anymore. We're just going to get the specter called out. I was going to get the top path glue, but it was caused me too much stress. It was there. I just couldn't get it. Oh, this one's not in range now. I was wondering where its little icons went, but because this village was actually hitting that one, as you can see, just a little bit, it made this... No, what the heck? How was that there and then it wasn't there? Oh, did I like move it last second? That's so goofy. I mean, who cares? Forget about it. Let's see if it can go over here now. Okay, now it works. Was I just not in range like it was looking like it was, but it wasn't? <laughs> okay, well, now it's a little bit faster and cooler. That's all that matters. Now I'm really contemplating half cash here. I've been like wrecking it in my brain what to do. I'm thinking we should just go with, uh, I'm actually gonna get a one of these two just to make sure that other guy's a little bit better on the round 80. But what I'm thinking is we start off with attack shooter. Now the reason I don't wanna do that and put it here is because it'll work, it'll be great, but it'll take more time for it to come around here. But I think it'll be better to sacrifice a little bit of time in the beginning so we don't lose midway through. And it looks like my my mouse is like stuttering on me. That's nice. Don't do this, Dragospear. What are you doing? All right, so I think this is the best way because look at that range. It's pretty ridiculous. So we'll just put this here and like that and then call it a day. It's still not enough though. That's a bummer. Okay, this is what I didn't want. But I think if I can just get even faster shooting, that won't be a problem anymore. Okay, I'll get more shooting then. We'll get more shooting first just so we can buy something. My problem was I probably shouldn't have put the darts up so high, but I just, you know, I get greedy with the time. I just want to do a little bit better every single time. So I want him up closer to make faster times. But if I had put him here, he'd have had a better pierce going through more of them. Honestly, I think I should wait on Striker Jones. He's a great tower, but do I need him this early on? I feel like I should farm before I even buy him, but that's, that's a bad idea. I just need to start farming because I need enough to buy something. We're not going to go with a juggernaut on this one like we normally do. I don't think I'll have enough for a bottom path sniper that was gross that was just really gross what just happened there i guess i'll just get striker whatever whatever we're just gonna ugh, you suck you suck you suck the only thing is i just can't lose that's all i'm worried about right now is losing because that'll take up the most time ever and we're doing really really good so far and this is a good spot for attack sprayer maybe we should just get a sniper here to call today just make it simpler on ourselves you're kidding me we now we can't even handle this stuff Okay, I'm just gonna let this one soak through and then I am gonna get rid of this one. It's just a stupid, stupid tower. Dude, we are getting dunked. And it, it's not as far as like bad as we're gonna lose, but this is wasting so much time. And this is the only thing I could think of for camo. I just didn't really know what else to do. I feel like this guy's gonna be sold eventually, so I didn't wanna have him just for one camo. So it's probably the best idea. It has a lot of range coverage right here. And I have him to where it, it could still do a lot of damage here. It even has some room for the sniper. So he might just be a solid tower in general until we figure out what we're going to do. I do want to farm, but I don't want to farm. I think right now we should just like double, triple down on bombs and just call it a day with that. And I think if we have this one here, at least up to a recursive cluster, we should be able to take down the Moab because we can stall it open and then this guy will clean up everything underneath and then worst case scenario, a couple slip through, but we should be able to make up for lost time. And then 63 should be no problem because we have like the striker Jones buffing these cluster bombs and we'll just focus on cluster bombs. And sure enough, we just get dunked onto all these camos. Oh my goodness, that was so gross. All right, here we go, here we go, pop it open and then boom. It's still, okay, that's exactly what I wanted, that worked out. Now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna grab an airburst starts and then a little bit of a waste of money, but it'll get the job done. And we'll put this one here, get that one and enhanced eyesight. And that'll be a more than enough camo for us for a while. It's ugly and slow though. Oh my goodness. New plan. What? No, not new plan. I was going to farm, but I don't want to farm. We're just going to do it this way. We're going to sell you buy the recursive. I just don't think we're going to farm. I don't think there's any purpose for it. I'm going to buy this one here. And then I'm gonna get rid of this sub and then buy the jungle drums. And now we have a really good team here. And I don't need that one anymore either. I'm just hoping these guys can take down Moabs and I believe they can, right? Yeah, okay, that's not bad, not terrible. If I get another one, we're totally golden. 
I'm a little bummed out it's working as you can see it's working really well it's just these mobs are making it way too far down the track and each time that makes it down that's like an extra what fraction of a second which adds up to full seconds extra seconds so I just don't know if we're on track to having like the best time ever I'm a little bummed out by it but luckily we're not going to lose or get even close to losing because having three recursive clusters with a striker and primary training is just beyond crazy so we can just slow this one now stall it like that and then as you can see everything's just gone when you do that and i believe if we had another one it should just go down even faster i don't even see the rush it's that quick that's pretty awesome three and a half recursive clusters make 63 just non-existent and then i totally forgot too if 63 is causing any problems you can use striker's first ability to stall it out and it'll literally just stall all the ceramics right there making it just completely wait for you to take your time it's so cool so there is no bloom that can get past us at this point. So now I just need to add some more maulers because I just, I do not like how long it's taking to take these BFBs and stuff out. It's kind of gross. So we got four maulers and four recursives and I'm not, I'm not upset. This is actually working out pretty well. It's a bummer that it took 78 rounds to get to this death mayhem circle here, but that's what happens when you don't farm. And I didn't know how to farm since we started with Striker. So Striker ultimately wasn't the best hero choice for this run, but I'm glad that we're trying something different because I still think that we are in the top. I, I'm staying in top three still. I don't see how not. I mean, worst case scenario, top four at two hours and 24 minutes on in the loop, but we are still making an incredible time. We lost, I think, three rounds. I think only three rounds, actually. Oh, but, oh my gosh. We can use the Moab Assassin and then use Striker's ability. Sorry, I'm changing subjects here, but I forgot we even have that third ability of his. So here comes the ZOMG. Use that ability. Use that. Bring it back. Do it again. Now you got two Moab Assassins for the price of one, and that is awesome. They regenerate quick. It's just like having the Geraldo thing going on. Now, I think we're on... Oh, I'm so slow with this. That's probably what's taking forever. I keep saying it, but that's what it is. Oh, yeah. We're on this one. I'm going to be using this guy. I don't want to be, but that's the best thing to do. Oh my gosh, pop it. Hurry up. What are you doing? That took forever. I keep losing to stupid things. Now, I think I'm going to try to go for striker for my bomb tower because it's only a little bit more expensive than an actual bomb or a sniper with a top path or even an alchemist. So you might as well get your hero so you can start leveling up. It's not the best, huh? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do this just to speed it up a little bit. I don't think I'm going to have enough for it. Oh my goodness. We're going to miss it by like a little bit. No, maybe not. Maybe not. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Strikers the moon. We had just enough money for him. That was so cool. Now, I like this ninja idea, but I'm going to change it up a little bit. I would prefer to be here because what I think I could do is just use like three ninjas, honestly, with an alchemist on them. And they can just shred everything for us for a while until we kind of like figure out what we're going to do. I don't want that camo lead to get past us, but I do want to farm. There's so much things to think about in all to loon rounds, man. It stresses me out. I am going to grab just a farm. And then I'll just let that one B do its thing. I'll grab a sniper, just one, put him on strong. There we go. And then hopefully I have enough for this. And I do. Oh yeah, I did. I had enough. That's all I needed. So I'm trying to get greedy, but the game's not letting me. So I guess the best would be to get another sniper up here because two are better than one, I think, right? It's just, we're farming so much slower. We should have gotten Benjamin, man. What was I thinking with this striker Jones nonsense? <laughs> I don't know. You use what's good for a reason, you know? I'm just hoping that two ninja bloom jitsus is enough to take down a fortified Moab, but I don't even know if we'll have enough for a second bloom jitsu. So I might have to sell something. But I think with the stall ability, it should be good enough to at least break it open. Actually, though, we're making so much money. I should be able to get bloom jitsu and then an alchemist, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I can. Okay, that's not bad. Maybe a little bit of acidic mixture dip, maybe just a little bit. Yeah, there we go. I like that. And then stall it out. Oh, it wasn't enough stall. It was not enough stall. We're going to lose. We're going to lose. I just lost. I, I just... Oh, stupid. I watched it go through. Oh my goodness. Alternate balloon rounds. You can eat it. All right. Here we go again with this one and it shouldn't be a problem. Oh my goodness. That's way better. That's just so detrimental to my psyche at this late in the game. And of course, we're going to add in the time to see like what it would have been because I really do think this would have been like a second or third place run based on what we're doing here. It's a short map as far as like we could put everything in the front. It's just such a bummer what happened. So what I did though, if you guys are following this as a guide, was I started off with Striker and then got the Ninja and he was enough just to carry us through. I think we lost like a couple lives. I th we lost all our spikes as you can see, lost a couple things there. But then I got my Ninja up to a double shot and then got a third tier Alchemist and then bought the Bloom Jitsu, then bought the Recursive and I was able to stall through that Moab as you saw. 
and it was pretty easy. I just wish I would have done that in the beginning. And and I'm sitting here looking at it, and in my head, this is what's thinking. I'm seeing all those fortified ceramics because it is all shit blue around. So I'm like, I think I have enough lives for some ceramics. Boom, fortified, and then I get dunked on, and then I'm doing it again right there. Look at that. Oh my goodness, what a genius. So what we need to do here is not lose. So I need to slow it down just a little bit and buy another ninja. Okay, that'll help clean it up. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna buy this right there. We're gonna grab this discount and that discount. And now with Monkey Town, we should make a lot more money, a lot more. Okay, we're good. Now we can buy this one and sell this and buy this and buy this. This seems like 15 grand right here, so we can sell them all and buy a big farm. There we go, now we got a farm. That's all we wanted. And now what's cool is if you make this one camo, you're safe to make this one bigger radius jungle drums and primary training. And they were all discounted, so everything was cheaper. Even our plane, which is great. And now everybody makes more money that's in range. That's awesome. And then this sells for 17, that sells for, so 37 total. And we only need 82 for this guy. I think that's only 48 grand I need, but I just want to be sure and buy this first so I don't have any problems. And then I think I could be able to, yeah, I think I should just sell, 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 sell. And then we got this flying fortress. There we go. Which I still think is better than the Apex Blastmaster because on Sulphur Springs, we use the Apex and he has this delay. Like you will actually see the tip of the Moabs come out and the BFBs and the ZOMGs. Meanwhile, the Flying Fortress attacks on the other side of the screen. So you never see anything. So I think it is a very, very much faster tower. So I think the best way to go about this, what's, where's round 80? Oh, cause there's like two of them, right? Okay, was, that's so crazy. Cause it's alternate balloons that always throws me off. I think the best way to go about this is just to speed run all the way to a flying fortress. To so get there as fast as we can, don't worry about anything else. So to start with this guy, put this here and go like this. This is the best spot for it. There we go. And then we'll just only get fast towers here in the beginning. I think that's gonna be, I think a druid. I think we just go with the druid and make sure it goes a little faster because the boomerang is not the best for this map. It would be if they're back here and it would be really satisfying to watch, honestly, but I think we just need to go and get crazy. I'm a little worried about 15, but I stalled it out and then I think that that's a bummer. That is a f huge bummer. We'll have to wait it out. That's all there is to it because we're going to have 1260 here any second and then that'll speed it up a lot. I just thought of something really cool. You know how we never go with the bottom path druid when you go with the middle path because you want that lead popping and that like better popping power in general? What if the bottom path was camo? Since the top path is lead, what if you went with the longer range and you were able to see camo, but then you couldn't see lead and so you'd have to buy both of them. I think that'd be really, really cool. I could see them doing that for sure. I'm pretty sure this should be enough to take down a Moab. I don't see why not. I'm a little struggling on my camo, but I don't care about that either as much right now either. And then we'll just go like that and then stall it. And then the stall worked. <laughs> I think the stall is what saved us. Then I am gonna grab sharpshooter for the camo right now because I do need to work on farming. Like we need to get there so we can get that flying fortress as fast as possible. And I've been working on my hotkeys too. That's H right there. Just, and then G is for the druid because I just need to like get better and faster at everything. Not just that a little bit here and there, just so we can always be on top of it. Like I use Q for the dart monkey more often. Now you can't do that on mobile, obviously, but mobile's right at your fingertips, literally, so you can just drag whatever you want a lot quicker. Unless you have bigger thumbs like me, I hit like four towers at once. It's so awful sometimes. <laughs> what are your guys' biggest woes as mobile players? Because I actually reached out to one of the developers because I wanted to know how many hours I have on mobile because I think on Steam I have like 5,000. Now, I put a lot of hours into balloons, yes, but that's also so many hours I've just left the game on on accident overnight, so you're just you know racking up tens of hours here and there. But... I want to know how much mobile because I started off on mobile before I started a YouTube channel and I still play mobile very, very frequently. Like every time I go in a waiting room, like the doctors, you know, doing taxes, whatever I'm in the waiting room for, I pull out Bloons TD6 and I start playing on my phone. So my mobile hours has to be in comparison to Steam for sure. So I'm just going to use a druid and two bombs until I can figure out what to do with my money here. And I don't know if this boat's the best way to do it, but I make money while I'm using it. So I figure why not? And then I save extra money because right now these sell for $5,800. Let's see if it's worth it. 59 and that one's 58. So most of them are 59. So I buy this and now they're 64. So that's $500. So I made $2,000 and that's way more than the sell price I'm getting back for him. So that's definitely worth it to me for sure. We're going to discount this one and then discount this one. And then we'll just sell it to get it up a little quicker like that. Sell to get this one, the Monkeyopolis. And now we have to get a couple here. So we'll get two because that one's double discounted. Put it right there. 
And now with 11,000, we can buy our first farm here. And there we go. Boom, 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 boom. Now everybody's making us more money except for the Druid, unfortunately, but that's okay. That's fine. And this time I upgraded this one to double drums and to the bigger range so I could get that double discount because this thing's significantly cheaper when you do that. But we're taking on 63 with the Druid and two bombs. This is pretty awesome. And why do I still have this here? Oh, because I'm going to sell him for the plane. That's why. Probably should have just sold it and got the money back, but whatever. Here we go. There we go. Two banana research facilities is more than enough. And then we can put this one in range of here as well. Get our Nevamis targeting. And then with our Spectre, now we shouldn't have any problems at all. Like, we should just be cruising. And how much do I need? These sell for 25000 with this boat, which is ridiculous. And this sells for eighteen, but I think it's out of range of that, technically. So if I put this there, it sells for twenty. So I got $70,000 right here, and he's only ninety-one. So I'm already done. I'm already there. Let's just do it. Let's just get out of here and call it a day. So we'll go like this, like this, like this, buy this. There we go. Sell our boat. Sell this one. Buy this all the way up to the Monkey Intelligence Bureau because now we have to worry about the DDTs. We can sell this one. We can sell this one. We can sell that one. Heck, we can sell all this. And I'm going to buy a Druid. Just get a Spear of the Forest, clean it up. I can't believe after selling everything, our farms and all that stuff, we're still able to get a fifth tier super brutal, a fifth tier spirit of the forest and a fifth tier attack shooter. Like you make so much money at the end of this game. We just made it all very, very quickly. And we got $16,000 from this druid himself, but we are destroying this and making up for lost time for sure. We're still gonna be in a top running spot because of this little speed run right here. Now chimps, I am a little nervous. I don't know what I'm gonna go for for a fifth tier, but I just want it to be fast. Nothing's gonna be as fast as this, unfortunately, because this is just insane. This flying fortress is nuts. Let's just be real. But I think we can come up with something here. This is all the top of my head always, guys. That's why this is so sporadic and weird and just crazy sometimes, because I'm just making it up as I go. Now, I just think a dart here would be pretty special. And then I think a, I guess this, I guess do this. Just put it right there. I think that's a smart way of not losing. Ah, oh, no. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we, do, we are going to have to use that. <laughs> Throw like a little last second sniper. It's such a waste. I should have thrown a dart monkey instead because I do want a sniper, but not in that position. I just wanted him off the track. The reason I like kind of panic through him over there, I want him away from everybody else. I don't want him to be hit by an alchemist if I want to do that or take up spot if I need it for like a village. But I did want one here. I just thought this would be in the way. That's a bummer. So I'm going to try something here. It's whatever's in range of strike or gets that pierce buff. So I'm going to put this here because I don't think it's a terrible spot for it. It does kind of eat up at the end of like if you're losing, but he can clean up right there like last second. And I don't want things to get that far anyway. I think I am going to go with an elite great fender here. I think that'll be a solid play because it's cheap to get to the fifth tier. So it'll be something that'll get us through quickly very early on. And then we could even run with like a specter and a tax shooter and just go with some weird towers here just to finish this off and get it done as quickly as possible. So kind of like a sporadic play that we do on medium mode and beginner mode, but for chimps. So maybe an elite, then a plane, and then like a bunch of bombs up front with striker's ability in like a village. And I think that should be able to cover a lot of the stuff that we're gonna have problems with. So this is what I'm talking about. We keep everything in back of the track now. So this will help us honestly just get through so much of this quicker. Uh, Druid would help too, but I think this is still a little bit better. Now it's hard just to refrain myself from getting a spirit of the forest. Like he's just such a great tower for what we're doing here, but maybe even a mortar for a cleanup would be better than a druid in this case. Cause a, like a top path would just go great right here with that range. And then with strikers buffs, but then we've used the, we've used that before. And that's what happened on moon landing, which wasn't a bad time. It was still for a while, our first place intermediate run. But our chimps mode is what slowed it down because we went with slow towers and slow towers are like ice towers, icicle pails, top path mortars because they don't really do that much damage. They're just really good at cleanup, just that kind of stuff. But here's our first Moab and I think this is more than enough to take it out. If it's not, we can stall it with the ability. So, I mean, either way we're golden. And I wanna try to time stalling the ceramics. I wanna show you how effective that can be. It's so cool. So you hit it, break it down, stall the ceramics and then you can clean them up. Super simple stuff. I can't believe even with a loss, we actually have a chance at making a really good time. We're only at two hours and 15 minutes and Sulphur Springs at second place, two hours and 20 minutes. I'm not sure if we can do this entire run in five more minutes. I don't think that's possible, but I'm pretty sure we can beat 224. We can get a really good run still. That's insane. I'm over there looking at the cheat sheet thingy at the Excel sheet and we're just getting wonked on by these. 
<laughs> These pink ones, that was bad. But this should be okay, hopefully. Should be able to get this right now and it should be fine. There we go. I'm gonna do it. I don't know if this is the best play. It's probably not. But I'm gonna go with never miss targeting. And then I'm gonna go with the Spectre. It's probably not even gonna get there before 63, so I might have to like kind of ditch and run and go with the recursive anyway. And a Spectre is great for mid game, for especially for speed, but it's not great for late game. It's so bad, but maybe it's not if we pair it with the Sniper. Plus, like I was saying, if we have an embrittlement right here and a few bombs, I don't even see DDTs getting past us. And then maybe we need to clean up. We can go with this one and that'll clean up everything. All right, I don't like this. We're not gonna be able to get through 63. So just to be safe, I'm gonna grab a regular recursive right here. I think that'll be j more than fine. Yeah, it's super easy with a recursive and a sniper. That's funny. But now I'm kind of worried, like am I buying a Spectre too late to where it doesn't even matter? Like this is already in the round 65. I should have him already. And is it gonna be enough just to have a bunch of recursives with the striker? I think it will, to be honest, but you just can't be sure. Those DDTs are what I'm afraid of. Around 98 could be rough, but we also have a mortar buff so we can get the shattering shells. I think we can get through this. And if we use it like a smorgasbord of towers, we might be able to get it actually faster than we normally would. That could be kind of different. We're usually just so used to getting a fifth tier and then like relying on it and buying stuff. But if we just buy a lot of stuff, how can it stop us? That was probably the longest time it's ever taken to get a tower. That specter just felt like it never got here. And it's already on round 70 and I already had a flying fortress on him pop all by 70. So this is not looking fast. That's all I can say. Now I want to get a embrittle, but I'm like, should I get it here or should I get it there? This would be the best spot, but then like the DDTs are gonna dunk on us. So maybe it's the best here just for like last second cleanup. I think this is probably a safer spot. Yeah, it's probably safer. We want to be safe. We don't want to lose. And we're already going pretty fast with an elite defender and a specter. So I'm not like completely bummed out by what we're doing. You know what? We're doing so good. I'm just going to do it. I think we'll be fine. I think if I just put a bunch of recursives down, we'll be able to blow up DDTs with ease. Like seriously, I'm not just making jokes. Like I think they'll just go away. We have a primary training. We have this guy just letting us destroy everything. We have a specter for cleanup. So we just need to break open their like main shell and we are golden. Here's a ZOMG. So that's obviously, that wasn't too bad, but now you're gonna have like 47 of, we'll see how 87 goes to see how 98's gonna go. If we get through 87, no problem. I don't see 80 or 98 being that bad. This is actually really, really, really good having six of these things. That's nuts. All right, and one more thing I wanna do. I mean, there's a lot more things I wanna do, but I wanna do this for sure. I wanna get this one all the way up to shattering shells. And then that will just completely help us out in those harder rounds. See, there's one ZOMG, two ZOMGs, and then, oh, it's 87 that has three of them, right? There's one, two, three, four. And we took them out relatively quickly. We have shattering shells now, so 98's not gonna be a problem. And then I think to take on the big old bad, I wanna get a Moab Eliminator. Okay, so that first DDT made it a little bit too far. That actually was pretty scary. Dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it. And it's because we don't have, okay, I'm gonna have to do this then. I'm gonna have to glue them to slow them down. And then I'm gonna also relentless glue them. I think that's gonna save us a lot. Yeah, okay, DDTs are slowed down. So now there's no problems with them. I would like to get a Moab Eliminator. Otherwise I don't think we can take out the Z or the big old bat at the end, honestly. So here's 95, but since we have shattering shells, it's gonna destroy all of those fortified Moabs. So that's not gonna be an issue. And then our only problem is gonna be taking out DDTs, but with relentless glue and those bombs, oh my goodness, this is what I like to see. We're actually going faster than we normally would on chimps. This is silly. So these ones, I'm gonna stall them here just so we can get those fortifieds because you can't defortify a ZOMG, but you can the BFBs underneath. Oh no, now it's 97. Okay, now we gotta take them down here. <laughs> that was my whole plan. But we, we still defortify them, so we're good to go. Oh man, I really want this Moab Eliminator. Am I not gonna be able to get it? No, we will, right? We will. We'll stall too, we'll stall, we'll stall. Okay, now we'll put him on strong, let him do his thing. Dude, we are just, jeez. This is insane. Oh my goodness. And then I can do this, use the ability, then use it again. And now we just got three Eliminators for the price of one. Do the second one, do that one, clean it up. Use the stall. Oh my goodness, that was so fast. That was so fast. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Where are we at, where are we at? Okay, we're gonna play, advance, back, FN9. Boo. Two hours, 25 minutes, and 36 seconds. Stream bed, black border. That puts us at, oh my goodness. It puts us right on resort. And then like, what's that? Like a fraction of a second, a 10th of a second. So we are slightly 
20 fractions of a second below resort, putting us at seventh place with a loss. Seventh place with a loss. So Apocalypse must be faster. Oh my goodness. Until last time on Sulphur Springs, Moon Landing was our best intermediate. And now we've done Sulphur Springs and Stream Bed right off the other. So either we're getting a lot better or Apocalypse made that much of a difference. Either way, oh my goodness, let's get some of these monkey knowledges. I think we we're working on magic. Or it might have been this one. I believe this is way better. All ability cooldowns for all monkeys reduced by 3%. That can come in really good handy. So let's do that one for sure. We're just leveling up so slow now. But actually, it looks like one map is getting us nearly one level. So it's about... Because we start at the end. So that's a little bit under... Oh man, we're, we're getting there. Slowly but surely, we'll have all these monkey knowledge points. I just figure like the whole game's going to be beat before that happens. Hope you guys enjoyed. I know I did. And if you have not yet, check out this video where we fully black border Sulphur Springs with one of our fastest times that you've ever seen. It's like this map was made to go fast. You got to check it out.